Okay, so um, in the second video, we're going to look at um, case two, which is repeated um, linear factors in the denominator. And the idea here, um, if you think maybe back to to, um, to adding fractions, uh, you know, looking at uh, just common denominators of integral values. So if you were trying to add, let's say, uh, you know, like one half plus, you know, two thirds plus um, five fourths. Okay, so the common denominator is not just necessarily two times three times four, which is 24. Um, although that is a common denominator, it's not the least common denominator. The least common denominator would be 12. And the thing is that four could have been written as five times two squared. And then uh, obviously we've got the three, and then you have just one of the twos. So the point being is that if you have a repeated root, um, like I have a two squared and a two, like, or I should say like the fact that I have a repeated root here could mean that I could have it as a square or as a, um, right, or as a single uh, factor, and it would still have given me the same common denominator of 12. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't increase that value because two itself has already been taken into account there. So when it's repeated, you have to, so if it's a square, you need to say, oh, there was the, the single factor, but also could be the quadratic factor. And if it was cubed, like, so if, if, if I was doing like, let's say one third plus one eighth, plus one fourth, plus one half, in other words, that's cubed. So then I could think of that, well, that's one over two cubed. I happen to have like a one over two squared and one over two to the first power. So I'd have a third power, second power, first power. So for however, however many repeated roots there are, you basically need to count that all the way down back to one. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, look at this problem and see an example. Um, so x minus one squared and, oh, and they still will be linear, just so you know, they'll, they'll still be uh, linear values. Okay, so um, I'm going to say, well, I have A amounts of X, and then I'll have B amounts of X minus one squared, but then I also have C amounts of X minus one. I don't know if I have anything that's separate, because that would still have given me the same common denominator. And once we do that, we still multiply by the, the, the whole denominator, the quantity x times x minus 1 squared. So that whole thing, we will distribute into the, th uh, this time, four components, right? So it'll cancel, this will cancel with that. So we get x plus 1 equals a. Now the x is there, so we just have x minus 1 squared. And then b has x minus 1 squared, so it'll just be an x. But the thing about c, it only has one of the x minus 1s, so it's still going to have an x minus 1, but it's also going to have the x. Now, it starts the same. We want to pick smart x's because, again, if we think, um, you know, there are uh, this time four unknowns, a, b, and c are fixed, and x is the only variable. So let's let x equal 1. And again, that implies that the left side, 1 plus 1, so we get 2. And then here, 1 minus 1 is 0, so we, we get rid of a um, plus 1b. And then because we've ch we're choosing 1, that also makes that a 0. So 2 equals b. So we know that b equals 2. And then we can let x equal uh, 0, another good, right, another smart x to choose, because that's going to knock out this and this. So um, that means on the left side, 0 plus 1, which is 1. 0 minus 1, so it's negative 1 as a quantity squared. Um, that goes away, plus 0, and that goes away, plus 0. So now I get basically a equals 1. Okay, now, once you know a and b, um, you could now choose any other value of x that you'd like to get for c, because if you notice, there's no more smart values of left. We chose 0, we chose 1, and that, because c was tied to both of those as factors, we never were able to get C by itself. So you could just pick, since we already know what A and B are, we could pick any other X that might be like a relatively small value and solve for C. So like we could, one method, and I'm gonna show two different methods just so you know. So one method could be, okay, maybe picking two is not too bad. So if you let X equal two. So then we know that two plus one is three equals A times two minus one is one and one squared is one. 
and then two times b is two b, and then two minus one is two, sorry, two minus one is one times two is two plus two c, but we knew that b was two and a was one. So then I could say three equals one times one, which is one, plus two times two, which is four, plus two c, or three equals five plus two c, so therefore c would have to be um, negative one. So we could solve it that way. Now, here's another way to think about that problem, to think about this problem. Um, counting or thinking. And, and this is what I mean by counting or thinking. If you, if you look at um, where uh, C is at, C would have been, oops, uh, C would have been the coefficient in front of um, X squared. Like if I were to multiply that out, right, if X squared minus one, C would be in front. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to think um, x squared. So let's think about uh, or count uh, x squared. Okay. So I definitely know that there would be a c amount of them right there. And if you think about, well, this gives you no x squared, but this, there would be an a, right? If I were to distribute that out, I know there's a x squared there. And since it has to balance, it's kind of like a chemistry equation if you're counting x squared. You have to balance them on this side, and there aren't any, right? There are zero x squareds. So the coefficient of the x squareds have to still solve this equation. Zero has to go a plus c. And if you know what a is, which is one, then you know that the c would be its opposite, right? So, so there's another way to solve that c has to be negative one. So sometimes this idea of thinking or counting about um, terms is a smart thing to do. And it works for any, um, any of the... Um, excuse me, the degrees, quadratic, linear, constant. It makes the most sense to pick the ones, obviously, that C is associated with, so like either the x squareds or the x's. So then my final answer, we have to compose all three of these. So it's A, which is 1 over x. So my final answer, 1 over x. Um, and then it's plus B, which is 2, so plus 2 over x uh, minus 1 squared plus c, which is negative 1, over x minus 1. There are the three partial fractions. Okay. Let's look at the next example. Now, here in example d, I'm going to have to do a little bit of factoring, and I realize that um, when I do factor that, it's a perfect square. Right? So it's x minus 1 as a quantity squared. So that's a repeated root. It's linear. There are two of them. So I know that there's going to be A amounts of um, x plus 1, and there'll be B amounts of x minus 1 squared, but then there must be C amounts of just x minus 1 by itself. Now, here's the thing. C could be 0. There could be no amounts of it, and that's okay, too. If you ever get a 0, then you just don't include it. But until we know for sure, we have to, we have to consider that there just might be. Okay, we're going to clear out the fraction by multiplying by the denominator. So we're going to multiply everything by x plus 1. I'm pretty much out of room here. Uh, x minus 1 squared. So that's going to clear out all of these uh, fractions. And the, for the left, it completely gets rid of the um, denominator. So it's 2x. For this one, you keep the a, and then the x plus 1 cancels x plus 1. But we still have x minus 1 as a quantity squared. The b term cancels out the x minus 1 squared, but we still have x plus 1. And then for c, because it only has 1, um, it's going to keep one of the x minus 1s, but it still has one of the x plus 1s. And whatever that kind of like that middle term is, so to speak, like, like where you don't quite get rid of both, that's the one that you're going to have to either, uh, well, you'll solve for last, and you either pick any nice x or you can count or think about the different terms that are there. So let's at least get the nice ones first. So let's let um, let's let x equal negative 1. Smart, right? Because that'll get rid of anything that has an x plus 1 in it. So if you let x equal negative 1, the left side becomes 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. This is negative 1 minus 1. So it's a times negative 2 as a quantity squared. Don't forget your parentheses. That goes away, so there's 0. And that goes away, so there's 0. So we get negative 2 is equal to 4a, which means that a um, is equal to negative 1 half. Okay. Next x is um, positive 1. So if I say let's let x equal positive 1, that means we get uh, 2 
equals uh, 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we get 2b. And then, again, this goes away because of that uh, 0. So we get 2 equals 2b, so b is equal to 1. Now, in terms of c, again, we could do one of two ways. Um, you know, maybe picking 2 is not too bad of a value. So, so we could do it that method. So, uh, and again, I'll, I'll do both ways. And, and once you decide which way you like better, you can choose whichever way. So um, let's let x equal 2. And that means the left side becomes a 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. And I picked 2, because I knew 2 minus 1 is 1. And 1 squared is 1. So I get 1 times a, which I know what a is. So I could have, I guess, substitute that in, um, right? a is equal to negative half. So I might as well just do that. So a negative half um, plus, and then when we let 2x be 2, um, 2 plus 1 is 3 and 3 times b. So 3 times b, which is 1, um, plus, and then we get c, and then 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, so 1 times 3 is 3. So 3c. So we get 4 is equal to negative half uh, plus 3, so that's 2 and a half. Uh, plus 3c. And then uh, you could subtract that over, so that's 1 and a half equals 3c. And you divide by 3, and we'll get c is equal to 1 half. So that's one way that we could solve that. So we knew a was negative half, b is 1, and c is equal to 1 half as well. Or I should say 1 half, um, but that was a negative half there. Okay, now the other way is thinking or, or counting. So if we look where c falls, um, so c is definitely going to be uh, the lead coefficient of an x squared. So let's think or let's count, um, think or count about x squared. And if this is the method you're going to do, which I think is really efficient, that's awesome. But just tell me what you're thinking. Like, tell me what you're counting. I'm counting x squared. So again, looking at the left, trying to think like a balanced equation here. There are no x squared. There are zero of them. And then looking here, well, if you would multiply this term out, you would get x squared times a. So you have a amounts of them. I'm just keeping track of the coefficients. This term gives you no x squareds, and this term gives you c amount. So I know that to keep this balanced, 0 would have to equal a plus c. And we remember we already had solved for a previously. So if we knew a was negative half, that would be another way to conclude that c would be positive half. Now, it's okay in this section. If you get fractions for your um, coefficients, like we just did, right? So, oh, there it is. So for our a value and um, for our c value, they were fractions. I'm okay leaving those fractions up within the, the numerator of your fraction. So like uh, my final answer then would be uh, a, which we found is negative half. So I could say it's negative one half divided by x plus 1. If you want to leave it like that, that's fine. Plus b, which we said was 1, over x minus 1 squared. And then plus c, which is 1 half. So 1 half over, and then that would be um, just an x minus 1. Now, if you don't like that, you could also rewrite this as a simplified version, um, which would mean that you would say it's negative 1 divided by 2 times x plus 1, plus 1 over x minus 1 squared, and then one more, this 2 could come down like this. So it's up to you. Um, to be honest with you, the unsimplified version, which is this one right here, um, that is actually a little bit more useful in, um, in calculus, um, and also what we're going to do in the next unit. So I would prefer that, even though this sounds kind of weird, because it's like the probably the version that you're not like you're like oh that's not simplified um but actually it's a lot more useful and we need to move on to applying this to the two uh to the two main math topics that you would use this for okay so um so we should know pretty much how to do a majority of the homework there's just one more case left um which would be a non-repeated quadratic so meaning you can't factor into two linear components right like x squared plus one doesn't factor uh, across the reals and here's the thing, like you can brace, like basically you can have an infinite number of cases, like, okay, so after you do the quadratics, you know, that don't reduce, then do you repeat them? And then you do the cubics that don't reduce and then repeat them, right? So, so any degree, but for this class, we won't go any higher than quadratics. Okay, very good.